Welcome back to Tactics Talk with Guido. In this episode, we have a clanmate, Jack X360 from Cartel. He's in a Mouse and a 357. This is a fantastic setup for him. I have fast forward a little bit to show you the situation when he gets into town because the Mouse takes a long time to get there. And he's going to show you a couple things that are very important in this game. Number one is realizing that where he is on his flank, he needs to get it done quickly and understanding that he's just the tank to do it. As in, he's got a good setup, and if he presses hard, he can really clean up where he is, and then we'll find out what he does after that. So let's just take a look at how he drives the mouse. You'll notice that there's only two guys back on cap. We sent nobody. Actually, we spent, sent one out to the field, and he's dead. That's the dead IS-3. And he's just going to come around the corner. And quite literally, there's almost nothing here that can hurt him if he can keep it to his front, and this is a pretty good move right here. He's coming at these two guys, even though they have crossfire on him, he's putting an angle on both. Really nicely done. Puts a shot into him and then keeps on moving. I have to assume that the enemy artillery is busy shooting up on the cap because they take a long time to pay attention to Jack here in town, which works out well for him. It's stuck on a building right there. That's one of the problems with driving around in sniper mode. I think he hit the gun right there, or maybe just a crit no damage, but nothing happens. He's got to take down this 34. 34 can pin the side of the mouse, no problem. It's going to have a harder time in the front, and it's going to have a really hard time when it's dead. Take a look at what's going on in the north, the northeast there on the cap. The grill 15 is something he does have to deal with and worry about. That guy can pin him. Maybe a little rushed shot right there, Jack. Lower. Lower plate would have been good to take him down. He's going to angle to this M4 who tracks him, which is a good move on his part. I think I would have fixed my track right here, immediately pulled back and whacked the E75 or the grill. I think he'd get to it there. Good choice on the target to shoot. The E75, you could get a bounce, and the grill's gun is more dangerous, even though the E75's gun is actually pretty dangerous as well. He's going to push in here, go for the track and the pen. Puts damage on the grill, and the grill's down to a one-shot. And you'll notice that the cap is dead. So they've lost the cap, and the team is ahead by a tank or so. And they have pushed hard into the town and cleaned it up. Good news is some of his team has gone back, or we're simply camping back in the back edge of the battle there on the DE line. And now Jack is going to go ahead and start heading straight back to cap instead of pushing to their cap. And this is the right decision because they're already pushing their faster tanks up on the cap. You can see that one is already up on there. And I'm going to go ahead and fast forward here, and we'll talk a little bit more about pushing into a flank and understanding your tank's role and what the enemy setup is. He had a great setup for that whole situation in the town, and he ends up cleaning that up pretty quickly by being aggressive and not playing peekaboo and side scraping. You'll notice that this is a near run thing. I'll just slow it down as we get in here. We know it can get down to about one second. His team does have two artillery, so that's going to make it very difficult for the enemy team to be able to cap this out. One thing to think about on this map, and especially from this cap, when you leave the cap, knock down as many of the destructible buildings around the cap as possible. There's a lot of cover for guys to hide behind down there. Most of it is destructible. And if you knock it down, it will make this situation that they just dealt with much easier because you don't have to shoot through things. It's harder for the enemy to hide. And he pretty much just cleans these guys up pushing on in here. When he came across back from the town, he did highlight himself along the ledge right there. It looked like he was going straight to try to get the reset. That's an unfortunate bounce right there. But that's a judgment call. He never really got his gun into the game. It was his team who was able to reset, but now he's getting in there and cleaning up. So I don't think the shorter line helped him much, and he actually took a shot from the Centurion on the side. The good news, not the Centurion, but the Scorpion. The good news is the guy did did bounce. And the enemy team is still a little ahead right here. I like this decision to push in. Try to track down this object 430 and pretty soon he's going to start getting attention from the artillery. Put your head down there. Not enough to kill that guy. And now he's taking shots here from the WZ. 430 is running and he is pushing forward. So the scorpion can give him trouble. Obviously the arty can and it did just that right there. Again, I think I would have, there you go, I would have fixed it immediately. I also would have gone ahead and burned my med kit and get rid of the stun. But it goes away pretty quickly. 
And the reason I say that is I want to get down there and get rid of this 430 as soon as possible. Now we get very indecisive right here. The artillery is still an issue. There is the scout who's making a very close move. And down he goes. That was huge for them. The other medium, the 416, has better view range than the mouse does. But the Sturb has quite good view range as well. Especially if you can get into the right position. So this is an interesting setup right here with the medium and the scorpion. And we've got the Sturb and the mouse with artillery on both sides. I'm not exactly sure what Jack was trying to do right here. He's up to five kills. I don't think he's spotted right now. I think that 416 is pretty far away. But there is another way to spot people, and I think you can guess it right here. He's really moving this tiger around, and if the artillery was just watching as the mouse backed up, he may still be looking at this general area. He can definitely see this Tiger II carcass bouncing around. At first I thought he was trying to get up on top of this thing. <laughs> or maybe he was just trying to stomp the deca decapitated head of his enemy there, I'm not sure. But pretty soon he's going to learn the error of his ways. When you move tanks like that, there you go, because of the top-down view, which is ridiculous for Artie, who can actually see things moving around even though they're not in any kind of a line of sight of anybody or spotting range of anybody. He ends up eating a shot for it. Now the Sturb has been aggressive, and I do appreciate that for a casemate kind of TD. He's moved up in the corner and I'm going to go ahead and speed this up. Jack goes around the back. So quite indecisive there on the cap. I think I would have pushed maybe right across. Just pause it for a second. I think if you'd have come down here and got around this bridge area, you could have worked to this edge. Stayed a little bit already safe and got close enough that if these guys are trying to troll around in buildings or hide in bushes like right around here, you'd end up seeing, seeing them. But the good news is Beat up his flank, pushed in hard, knew he could do it, ate everything alive in there, turned around and came back, helped clean up the cap. And that's quite a bit of movement for a mouse on a big map like this. He's coming all the way across here. The Sturb is up on their cap. Now this is an interesting situation right here, right? The only place the enemy can be, they if they're fast enough, they might be up here and maybe squeeze through, but I don't think so based on the spotting time. So they're more than likely down in here somewhere. This is quite a lot of map control for just three tanks, but because of the places they went through and knowledge of the map on where the enemy could be, also possibly go right up to the river bottom, but unlikely based on where he's seen them, we're probably going to find them right down here. So Jack's going to come up top, that way they can't get around behind this side or minimize the capability of it. And holy cow, there they are. So we'll just slow this down. We're going to eat another artillery shot here. That's a good shot. Another shot onto the 416. And these guys are in big trouble. Sturb's coming up over top. Scorpion's going to try to take a shot. There's the artillery. Goes ahead and fires while well stunned anyway. The other thing about going straight across, and I understand you want to try to avoid artillery, but for the mouse, even a 55-55 is not going to do a whole lot of damage to him. And while it can keep you tracked and the 416 might be annoying, that would then give the Sturb an opportunity. It's just another way to do it. This, The way you did it absolutely worked, obviously. And then the Scorpion G is going to go down. This ends up being the seventh kill for Jack. 4,000 plus damage. I'll show you the results at the end. So once again, great example. Even though it's a big, large tank with a lot of open area, he took it to the critical battle area, realized he had quite the advantage based on his team's setup and the tank he was driving, pushed hard into him, wiped them out, and then came straight away back to the cap. The good news is his team did a good enough job to stop them from being capped. It was a very near-run thing. But he helped clean off the rest of the cap, kill a few more tanks, and then track down the other guys. And even though they had something of a disadvantage on the spotting game, minus the stir being in the right spot, of course, they're able to do it smart, come around and clean this thing up. Hope you liked what you saw. If you did, make sure you subscribe. I also hope you learned something. And as always, we will see you.